Thank you very much. Okay, great. Thank you very much for the introduction. It's a great pleasure to be here. And also, thanks a lot for organizing this great conference. So today I would like to talk about the results on the dynamics of service deformations. Let me start by stating the main result I'd like to present today. So the theorem Dan is that if we take sigma to be a smooth closed oriented surface, and assume that sigma is involved with an area loss, omega is an area one for sigma. And let's use the notation, let's say, with infinity sigma omega to denote the C infinity morphisms of sigma that preserves omega. Uh, sigma. Morphisms. Then the statement of the theorem is that if phi in if infinity sigma omega is a generic element, Fine. We have that the set of periodic points of fine is dense on C. Fine. It's dense. And here the word generic means that at a subset of bare second category uh, with respect to the C infinity topology on the infinity sigma omega. Uh, the statement is that uh, for uh, such as, uh, there exists such a subset so, so that for every element in that subset, the, uh, the corresponding diffeomorphism has a dense subset of periodic points. Now, of course, by definition, periodic point of a diffeomorphism phi is simply the point such that uh, after finally many iterations, find one. So, P is So this kind of results are usually referred to as the closing lemma. And in fact, uh, results uh, with this uh, formulation has been, uh, has attracted a lot of attention since, uh, the, uh, since 1960s and 1970s. So let me first make some remarks about the statement of the result. First of all, it's not too hard to see that the area preserving condition on the diffeomorphism cannot be uh, removed in any straightforward way. For example, if you look at some uh, diffeomorphisms that are not area preserving, it's, then it's not too hard to construct counterexamples to the statement. One of such examples would be something like if you consider sigma to be 
For this particular example, we cannot define so that it has a dense subset of the other points. In fact, the first version of the closing lemma was obtained by Q from 1967. Where we proved the very minimum of all surfaces before manual arbitrary dimension uh, in the uh, for C100. So in my instance, you prove that for C1 as the closing on the holes for arbitrary. And and also instead of having the average reserving condition like general as is the most uh, the most general possible uh, statement where the periodic points can be uh, previously exist near any uh, positive so called non -like. Original proof of Q depends heavily on the fact that the maps are uh, C1 vector. And in fact, the question of whether such a closing will not hold for higher vector that here is being uh, a central question of dynamics. And the, the general question is listed as the 10th problem and on snails on the list. That perspective only involves human results. Smells problem for exactly the case of uh, average observing mass and surface in the world. Because it turns out that uh, a C infinity closing lemma uh, uh, using a, a short argument, we can show that C infinity closing lemma implies the CR closing lemma of any top of the bottom. And we're going to talk about that in the middle now. And also, I mean, the history of this question. So, uh, so a breakthrough is we measure the case on the closing that was obtained by the closing that was obtained. Where the cute, the smooth closing that was obtained by the closing that was obtained by the And later in 2021, there's another one here, by the Shin's one, that are talking on the whole score, the case was taken as scoreless, and that is as far as we are By the way, uh, simultaneously, uh, I 
operation. It's not a thing to buy patting on our companies. They approved the closing them out for uh average of certain features of all things surfaces offered the function of the product provision on the on the flood launch. So yeah, you can just still put generally. Uh, yeah, well, the question I would say that if you if you have an arbit, you can use an arbitrary. Oh, oh wow. Uh, yeah, so we have two different versions of both now. I have one and it's part of layer. So it turns out that you can show and use this condition to realize the matrix function and then by standard variance. But did they show that you that you cycle them if it satisfies that that one? Uh, yeah, so it's a condition that is a condition on the last three and it's formally by the top of 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 but if you can tell that by a very kind of one, you can show that this formulation is important to the computer, where you only need to show that uh, this particular set is that are there on the other hand. So, what I showed is that you find uh, satisfied in these type of equipment that you've always heard of that, so that's a so next problem. What do you call Real analytics, but uh, it's a false. I never thought about that, but I'm um, who doesn't give it? I think it doesn't give a good for the real analytics that we can find. I'm not the real answer to that. The yeah, analytics. Exactly. Can, can you say a little bit about why C1 is easier? And oh, yeah, and yeah, that's, yeah, and that's that's also related to the alternative statement of the theorem. So let me just write down the alternative statement of the theorem, which is equivalent. And we'll see that in the alternative statement, we see one over the chops five, so that's shattered by other people's second function. Uh, so uh, it's just a lot easier to put a mass in C1 category. Construct maps and a small version of maps in C1 category. And for Q's original construction, it's not easy to put a mass in C1 category. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So actually, uh, when I call the statement to you in the front, which is, uh, turns out to be an equivalent statement. But again, we use the notation of the sigma in the middle. It turns out that all we have to do is the following statement, which defines this element. And G is an open neighborhood of phi. In the C infinity topology, all the subsets there exists a fine prime in B such that the fine prime has 
at least one periodic point of view. So from this point of view, it's not too hard to see that the C infinity closing lemma in this particular case implies all the CR closing lemmas because it is known that uh, smooth area preserving diffeomorphisms is dense in the subset of CR area preserving uh, uh, circuit diffeomorphisms. Therefore, if this result holds for uh, open subsets with respect to C infinity topology, then that implies that the same result holds for the CR topology for n high. The reason that this statement is, uh, oh, and by this also explains why uh, it's easier to, to make arguments for this kind of statements when the regularity is slow, because in that case, the open neighborhood would be, would be larger so that we have more flexibility in the construct. To see that this version of the statement is equivalent to the original version is basically, uh, we just basically use a standard variant here argument. The original statement implies this version of the theorem is the, the implication is that theorem, the original statement implies this alternative version is uh, pretty much a lot of this. To see the other direction, that uh, you are the uh, comparable basis. Of Why not generate to this point? Then, so I guess the mission is open because having got a non generated periodic point is open condition. And By the statement of uh, listed here, you know that S I is dense. Because well, once we have one periodic point, it's straightforward to further perturb that in the C infinity category to make that periodic point non generate. So each S I is just open and dense subset, and we can take the comfort of the set and that is that. All right. Oh, and by the way, uh, uh, the question about the closing lemma for area preserving surface diffeomorphisms was also uh, was explicitly asked by Franks and Le Cave in 2003, and they uh, mentioned that as uh, probably one of the uh, most important questions about surface dynamics that they were discussing in that uh, in that survey article. So those those were uh, questions. Okay. So. Oh, yes, I think the was already known uh, by, uh, by Sokhanaria. In fact, the result of Sokhanaria was created by the uh, case of So, yes, the case for very well So, uh, the general strategy of the proof is this would be a protocol of the general protocol of the general strategy and problematic. All right, do we have any other questions about the statement of the results? Mm -hmm. All right, so now I'm going to move on and discuss some of the ingredients that are going to lead to the proof of the problem. So it turns out that our proof is based on, uh, first of all, a general strategy of software hybrid, which indicates we can induce uh, density results by, uh, by, by 
having some kind of a symptotic formula is blur block. And the, in the specific case of the closing lemma for every preserving maps on surfaces, we're going to use a quantitative version of lead helps isomorphism to deduce some kind of wild formula or a symptotic formula for uh, the, uh, the action functionals on periodic floral model. And it turns out that this particular symptotic formula will uh, lead us to approve of the closing map. So let me first uh, recall some location from a uh, periodic floral model. The purely floor homology is, uh, in some sense, a version of floor homology that is designed to, uh, to reflect the properties of surface dynamics. The setup is that if we have a surface sigma that's indulgent in every form, and let's assume that phi is an area preserving surface intermorphism, then we can consider the mapping torus, which we can know about and phi. And on these mapping torus, there are two particular different forms that will be important for us later. The first is um, well, the first is the, the pullback of the volume form from S1. So any time phi is a phi long row over S1, and that's dt phi pullback. One. And because phi is area preserving, so it turns out that the form omega can be pulled back to the uh, to the mapping torus. So In some literature, the pair dt and omega is called a uh, stable Hamiltonian structure on the three dimensional line phi, and stable Hamiltonian structure is considered as generalization of conic structure, which is a loss of analysis that goes into the instantiation of the weekend and generalize to stable Hamiltonian. And that's exactly what we're going to use here. So we consider the kernel of omega phi, and that's a one dimensional distribution. And in this case, R is the average to the river the generalization of the concept of the And it's not so hard to see that false orders of R. One 
So the periodic cohomology is a cohomology where we can find using uh, closed orders of R. More precisely, the generators of the periodic cohomology is given by the finite sets of closed orders. And the differentials given by Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, we're not saying that all the PLs would be not going to assume. It turns out that, well, so it's not so hard to, to see that if you use this kind of mission, then the TR model is not right to be with it because it's possible to have uh, two have differentials or two have different moment curves that start and end at the same, uh, at the same generator, but at non, uh, non zero. But uh, even if my is this in this case, uh, the song question is the question of the question of the question of the question the 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 which allows us to lift the gradient, but the relative cycle gradient to allow it to which I assume is important there. So instead of looking at the origin of the model, we have to refine this definition a little bit. So first of all, we fix uh, some cycle, say theta, some cycle. And instead of allowing generators to arbitrary uh, set those orders, we first of all require that those close orders have the same much much that. We will reach that with that generator by the orders of our data to do that particular outside place. In this case, we can generalize the definition of a general formality by also, the key kind of the model has some great things. So, you say three dimensions, you get the model curves. Plus, you have to be able to get the model. I 
a theta three division three of the uh, yes, thank you. So, if, yes. so apparently, if what you can find here in the end of the so you want to do this with the two application, so you find a theta, and it's not so hard to see that the automotive part of the two is not a model part of the world. There's also the three and three and the other parts of the three and three and the is. So the writing model of the kind of data you know, is the best. Okay, the concept of model. What I have to put the data is not a model. Because you can fix a model class to say that they are generated. And in this case, the formal division of the writing model. You also have to think that you speak uh, to fix the easy, you make a new one, you make a better match. Yeah, so the better match is still longer than the quality of the other things. Thank you. 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 Another advantage of having a lifting of the generators to uh, this saturated data that keeps track of the homology class is that now uh, the corresponding floor of homology is kind of lifted from, a, from an S1 value, uh, from a more serious S1 value function to a more serious R value function. So we can actually define uh, the action function of and we define the action function of the Z to be the integration of Z. Apparently, obvious close to form. Now, a, a now standard technique that we can use to study morphology using the value of the action function is that we can look at the mean max of uh, a given homology class. So now, if sigma is the h, fine. C sigma to be a minimum value among all representatives. Then for each representative, we take the maximum value. And in the literature, this invariant is usually called the spectral invariant of the given homology class. So the main gradient in the proof of the closing lemma is that we can obtain a symptotic formula or some kind of bio formula for the spectral invariant. But there are a few uh, there, there are a few issues if you want to write down the or make a guess of the potential symptotic formula for C sigma because apparently the definition of the action depends on the choice of the base side of the So for that reason, we can't exactly have a nice formula about the, uh, about the, the spectral invariant uh, in, in a more straightforward way because uh, the arbitrary choice on one cycle is to shift this uh, the spectral invariant by arbitrary commons. Therefore, instead of looking at or trying to find the symptotic formula for C sigma themselves, we, uh, the, what makes more sense is to look for uh, symptotic formulas for the difference of this C sigma so that the contribution from the choice of theta is canceled. And that is why uh, we have all of the things. Oh, okay. so for the ECH capacity, we actually don't need the choice of the cycle because the ECH capacity is defined in the simplification of the just for that, I just want to see that they are also defined in the Oh, yes, but they are also defined in the CCH capacity. But we don't have this kind of time for ECH because we look at the ECH capacity and look at the signal of object of analytic monitoring that fixed. I 
in this case, we actually have to talk about uh, sequence of small size of that is kind of sequence of random size of the So, here's the main result that I put in the closing. And that's all the two that all the other ones are not going to be able to find the other so long. And we find five times to be the provision of five by this kind of process by the combination of five. There exists, first of all, there exists a canonic loss of work. There is not a And of course, so then you have to the parts that we choose a uh, sequence of long time in the variable model the first place. So the theorem we use is, is the variable model is just the theorem. And in fact, it's very possible. It's 
uh, amount of water in that area, we have batch that doesn't have a drug at all. And in this case, by uh, the it is really good on the amount of the drug at the end of the same time we have. But it turns out that we have another thing we need. You're not assuming that it's bad and how it is. Yes, so we don't have to assume that. So, in order for this theorem to be useful, uh, we have to prove another theorem which guarantees the non vanishing of the twisted periodic So, this is the follows. If the degree of free bond is sufficiently large, uh, it turns out that once we have theorem A and theorem B, then it follows well by a now well known argument of Soka and Irie that we can use these two theorems to prove the closing line. So the proof actually works as follows. We assume that the desired result doesn't hold. In other words, we assume that it exists an open set B. Group. And mm -hmm. that for all I would be on a smoky round of mm -hmm. Then this means that if we look at one particular file, and if you only perturb the math bond U, then the set of periodic points never changes. There's no, there's no periodic points in U, and everything outside U is not changed by definition. The result, if you look at kind of integrations. Uh, sorry about that. There's actually a condition on the on the mic prime in order for this to be true. So if this and then that is not zero. But to go back to this way. All right. So in that case, if we let H to be a hundred points supported on U. And we assume that H is sufficiently small. We have to go the same thing in one part of the Let's assume that the same thing in one of the is very small. Then let's look at the family of the mass of final P to the position of final and it's found in my position. Then final P. Is a one family because we're assuming that five pieces, all the five pieces don't have any periodic points in view. So that's and, and the perturbation is supported in you. So the set of periodic points five P doesn't have. As a result, if you look at the value of the spectral invariant for prime with respect to some failures with respect to any given class sigma, then this element 
have to lie in a fixed complex subset. Uh, it's not you use the use the if you think of anything about certain things, you can say that's minus quantum of the key. And so the correcting term then it has to be lying with basic conflicts like that. But we can also think of that this function has to be a continuous function. So that actually implies that this value is going to have to be a constant. So it's implied. So as a result, this formula we find as a but of course that's a contribution because. You know that if you look at the so that is that's uh All right, do we have any questions about the argument before we dive into the details of house and the house and uh, All right, so now let me, uh, let me make a few remarks about the uh, arguments for the proofs of theorems A and B. So well, actually, let me start by talking about the proof of theorem B because it's uh, a little bit shorter. Uh, for the proof of theorem B, you kind of just use some computations from Peter and Tom's book, and then uh, and then cite the isomorphism theorem of B and Tom's. First of all, by an isomorphism of B and Tom's, we know that the purely floor homology is isomorphic to a version of multiple floor homology. And actually, the same proof works for twisted floor uh, homologies. So by the mean house, we can show that the twisted PRH uh, PR floor homology is isomorphic to a version of the twisted cyber meeting floor homology. Actually, a homology is more than a homology. And in that case, it's, uh, it's the hat where we have to the Yes, thank you very much. Yes, when the degree is large, uh, so this is the this is the front version of multiple core homology with the balanced convert. So this is actually a uh, phi with some respective species structure and given by the balanced conversions. But it turns out that when the degree is large, uh, by the general framework of Peter and Tom, we can prove that it is actually isomorphic to the bar version. It's large by that sequences. We show that it's isomorphic to the bar version. That's the question. And in the non twisted case, there's a whole chapter in the Peter Tom's book computing the far more homology with Q coefficients. And using their computation, it's not too hard to prove that the non twisted version of the homology is always not vanishing. So, my, so please forgive me for not spelling names. <laughs> so, uh, you know that the non twisted version, according to the books, is 
theorem. And now it turns out that there's some homological algebra which needs to relate to this version of not this version. And we know that not this version is not zero that applies by homological algebra. That's this version. It's also this. So that's a sketch of the proof of the non vanishing result. For the proof of the modern form, there. It actually gives you to reduce the computation of side reaction and the energy problems or the turn on the ground on the other. We helps do the entire analysis. We have to establish the equivalence of the isomorphism of one total of homology and the other total of homology. They consider a one parent family of the same as the other. In a particular case, we can start this. So I think it equals some of the terms of the plus of the T2 of the terms. And in this case, so for each value of R, there's a corresponding, well, as long as the solution can now turn to the corresponding inversion of R. Of course, we know that they're all isomorphic amongst the R is a pure model, and they're all isomorphic amongst the pure model of R and anything else. But the, the point is that for each value of R, you can have an inversion, especially having this for R. So for each R, this is E R sigma times on top of an R. In this case, it is the mass E of the value of the and the sign is the R. By the earlier work of policy, this group of classes conducted, you know that this one is a continuous in piecewise C1 function in R. And it is satisfied on all the very equations in C1, which I'm on the tree. And you can get modern that you play this rather than some uh, special law that means we can show that this function in a certain sense cannot vary too much. So for the if we fix it to a particular value of R, then the difference of this function between the limit of the plot and R infinity uh, can be bonded. Uh, fully So this means that if you can look at the behavior of the sound of this direction and the different guys are the energy, they have to go and marry them up to the energy. But then, if you take this particular value, it's not zero of the equals sum of now the energy and the energy 
This particular case, not that. But it's not a good thing. In fact, because we have to release it in the pot, so we want to be making the program on the like more than the borrowers. So, why is the issue of the cancer of the next one the degree? So, why? And it's kind of embarrassing how you realize what's it? Well, we just put in this right out and we decided that. Therefore, this means when they bridge the between five and activity, it's a little bit confusing to decide that the value was. So, well, we have to do it. I think you raised it. Thank you. Thank you. Our So by a uh, Lee and Kelps, we also know that the limit of the multiple spectral invariant R to infinity actually recovers the PFH spectral invariant. And there, there's some correction terms from the choice of conditional solutions, but Coming from the choice of the regular magnet and the bigger cycles. But basically, it says that if you pick a limit, the data covers the PFH spectrum. So, this PFH spectrum then is recovered by the limit. And we know that this limit is not very far away from the spectral value of 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 the spectral which uh, will converge to zero as we divide the difference by the factor of three. So if you combine all these estimates here, then that then it should be All right, so I think I'll end my talk here. Thank you very much for your attention.